All right, let's do it. Some early morning Philadelphia Eagles talk on a Saturday. This is Eagles Now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Hope all of you out there are getting set to enjoy your Saturdays. And let me know down in the comments section what everybody is up to today. I know we have people tuned in from worldwide when I take a look at the analytics. I'm going to go for... A run, work out a little bit, then it's off to the chat sports studios for me. But let me know how you're kicking it on this fine Saturday, regardless of where you are. As for the Eagles news that we're getting into on today's show, Philadelphia making several roster moves prior to their practice in South Philadelphia at the Novacare Complex. And the Eagles injury report after that preseason game against the Cleveland Browns, it is long and some notable names are on that. Before we get started, show some love to the channel by hitting that thumbs up icon and liking the video, commenting, most importantly, Make sure you subscribe. Year-round daily coverage right here on the show. That's real, authentic, and consistent. We're a little more than 500 people away from 49,000 subscribers. And once we get to 50K, we're going to celebrate in grand frat fashion right here on Eagles Now. So let's begin here with the Eagles injury report. It's long. It's lengthy. These players did not practice today as Philadelphia was in pads just a couple of days after that preseason matchup at the link. Britton Covey continues to be out with that hamstring injury. I'm not sure if his roster standing is going to be in question here. Greg Ward has shown some ability to return kicks and is a better wide receiver than Britton Covey. And today, Nick Sirianni was wearing a Greg Ward shirt. I think it's somewhat interesting if you're into looking deep into those types of matters, but Burton Covey being out with the hamstring continuously, I think is a little bit of an issue for his fighting for a roster spot. Fletcher Cox out with knee soreness. I think this is just veteran maintenance. Makai Garner with an ankle. Kyron Johnson appendectomy. So he went under the knife there. Moro Ajoma, this is good news. He suffered a concussion. Now, obviously, concussion, not good news, but when you get carted off the field, a lot of people hold their breath. They get a little bit worried, but for him, it's only a concu concussion for the seventh-round pick out of Texas. Hassan Reddick, he's out most likely until at least week one with that thumb surgery. Trey Sermon added to the Eagles injury report with an ankle injury. Nolan Smith did not practice because of the shoulder ailment that Kicked him out of that game against Cleveland. He even said after the game, I'm fine. One of the reporters who asked him, is your shoulder okay? He said, I'm good. Shake my hands. So Nolan Smith seems to be okay, but of course, precautionary reasons there for the Eagles' first-round pick. Greg Ward, the aforementioned Greg Ward, longtime Eagles legend, out with an ankle. And then Quez Watkins, still out with a hamstring injury as well. So going up against Cleveland and the couple of joint practices that the Eagles had as well resulted in a lot of players on this Eagles roster being injured here. Luckily, Nothing too serious outside of Reddick's surgery and a couple of other ailments there. But as far as season-ending injuries go, we talked about Zach McPherson yesterday, special teams ace, out for the year with that torn Achilles. And then Sean Bradley the week before against Baltimore, special teams ace, also with that ruptured Achilles. As for the Eagles roster moves, that's why a lot of you are here. Philadelphia signing multiple players and releasing and waving. A couple of players as well. Eagles signings here. Defensive tackle Robert Cooper. Defensive tackle Marvin Wilson is back. Sean Desai did mention that outside of Jordan Davis at nose tackle, they're a little bit thin. So Marvin Wilson, who was with this team last year, didn't necessarily play well when Jordan Davis went down. But he is a big body on the interior there at nose tackle, defensive tackle. Philadelphia also signed defensive tackle Caleb Sanders, linebacker Tyreek Maddox-Williams, and line linebacker Quentin Bell. As for the players who Philadelphia waived, Tyreek Cleveland, Waived injured list, Noah Ellis, the brother of Christian Ellis, waived an injured list, and then Zach McPherson waived an injured list. Now, don't panic if you like those players, because the expectation is that those three players will clear waivers, they'll come back to Philadelphia, 
and they'll remain with this team, but they'll get placed on season-ending IR. So expect those three players to come back with Philadelphia here. At least that's the expectation that I've gathered and just wanted to pass along that news here on Eagles. Now, the notable roster move that I guess when this player was signed, you may have been surprised if he got released on August 19th, way before the 53-man roster cutdown date but not surprising considering how he's played throughout training camp in the preseason because his stock has been down. Eagles releasing cornerback Greedy Williams, the 2019 second-round pick by the Cleveland Browns. His stock has fallen precipitously over the last couple of years. A couple of years ago, I actually thought he had a pretty solid season. Last year, he got benched. He was injured by Cleveland. I didn't like their defensive coordinator, Joe Woods. That's why they fired him, so I thought... For a bargain deal for Howie Roseman at a position of importance that they really value at cornerback for a depth piece, Greedy Williams, the signing there certainly made sense, but Greedy Williams has been let go by Philadelphia, and I think he's going to get scooped up by a cornerback needy team just because there's always teams out there who are bullish on a player with pedigree still with some potential, who think that they can maximize and extract the best out of a player like that, who has put some solid moments on film, but those solid moments didn't come in training camp in the preseason for the Eagles. I also think that this is an indication that this front office, this coaching staff, they like some of the young defensive backs on this roster, and this is where things get pretty interesting and pretty notable here. Because Zach McPherson out for the year, that's one cornerback out, and then Greedy Williams already let go. They could have held on to him up until 53-man roster cutdown day. Instead, they let him go now. So I think what Philadelphia is trying to do here is see what some of these young players can do in trying to earn a roster spot. Those young DBs include Mekhi Garner, Eli Ricks, Mario Goodrich, Josiah Scott, And Keely Ringo. I think Keely Ringo, with the Eagles trading up for him on day three of the draft in round four, he's a shoe in to make this roster. They like his ability, the 4 3 speed. We saw him get lost in translation when the ball was in the air with that bad play that shouldn't have happened. Should have been an interception with that throw that was on the inside. You always want to throw that ball toward the sideline. It was a bad throw. Keely Ringo lost the ball in the air. But still, you're going to bank on some of that ability that he showed at Georgia, which was why going into last year, a lot of people pegged him as a potential first or second round pick at that position of importance. But he's going to make this team. As for the other DBs, you know, you have Makai Garner, you have Eli Ricks, you have Mario Goodrich, Makai Garner, the UDFA, this year out of LSU. Eli Ricks went to LSU, then transferred to Alabama. UDFA, who really headlined the UDFA list. We've talked about him plenty on the show. Had that pick six week one of the preseason against Baltimore. Some people said he got cooked against Cleveland. I actually disagree. I thought he put some decent plays on tape. The one play that he gave up for the touchdown, he put his hand in there, but kind of that back shoulder ball in which the receiver had to bobble it. I'm not going to really knock him for that. It's professional football, man. Sometimes make uh, good players make good plays. And then Mario Goodrich, who was with this team last year, UDFA in 2022 out of Clemson, he might be the guy to step in there for some slot opportunities as the backup to Avante Maddox as that role was occupied by Zach McPherson. And look out for him because he's gotten some first-team reps throughout training camp so far. And then Josiah Scott, he was a fourth-round pick by the Jaguars a few years ago. He stepped in for Avante Maddox at the end of last year when Maddox got hurt with that toe injury. He's got an opportunity once again. So those are the young defensive backs that now have a good opportunity with McPherson being out for the year and then Greedy Williams being let go. The other move here, Ty Zentner, the punter release. So the job right now belongs to Aaron Sipos, who didn't have a good ending to his season last year. Bad performance in the Super Bowl. I said this earlier this week. Matt Arez has been cleared of any wrongdoing, any charges. There's a reason they call him the punt god. He was able to set several records at San Diego State two years ago. I would bring him in, especially if he's cleared charges. That is an impact player on your roster at that punter spot, which is very rare, and he's better than Aaron Sipos. He can flip the field, coffin quarter punts, 
60-yard punts regularly and routinely, you can look at him as a weapon. And very rarely at punter do you have a weapon. That's why I like a raise. Uh, Zetner was awful uh, in the preseason and then against Cleveland. I said it on air. I said it on my Twitter page, at Chase underscore senior. Ty Zetner can't be this team's punter. He just had a couple of awful punts against the Browns. Practice notes from today as the Eagles were hitting the practice field once again two days after that preseason game. Jalen Carter getting first team reps. He had a pass breakup. I like the instincts there that he showed there outside of just being good against the run, good against the pass. Sidney Brown, first team rep seven on sevens. And then second team reps 11 on 11s at safety. And Marcus Mariota threw another another interception. So that continues to be a problem as we talked a lot about the backup quarterback spot yesterday on the show. The Eagles gave Mariota $5 million in guaranteed money. I don't think that should step in the way of them cutting him if he's not going to get the job done. Um, More practice notes here. Lane Johnson was asked to do uh, an Eagles player and reveal an Eagles player who could have a breakout season after mentioning a few offensive linemen. And Lane Johnson said, quote, I think Jalen Carter can make a lot of noise this year. I really do. He's a guy who can play right now, play at a high level right now. Um, So that's obviously notable. So those are the latest training camp updates from the NovaCare Complex in South Philadelphia. If anything else happens, I got you covered here on the show. About to hit the mean streets of Dallas here. Go on that run. All day running company. Not a sponsor, but if you want to sponsor me, I'm cool with it. My running streak Ended at 300 days earlier this year. I'm back at it, approaching 100 days once again. Uh, Get some lifting in as well. Hope everybody out there has a good Saturday. That's not a brag. It's just what I'm up to, and I ask what you're up to down in the comment section, so let me know. Philadelphia Eagles now by Chat Sports. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching the show, and I'll catch you next time.